Welcome to this year's Congress reporting from SABCS. SABCS is the San Antonio Breast Cancer Conference, the largest uh, breast cancer conference in the world, I would say. And today I welcome you on behalf of Mamma Mia and Patients Today uh, into this reporting. Um, my name is Alexandra von Korf and I'm warmly welcoming Professor Mark Till from Frankfurt. You would kindly introduce yourself. Yeah, Alex, yeah, thank you. Yeah, indeed. Um, so the biggest breast cancer conference in San Antonio held every year, and this was my 20th anniversary. My name is Seth, uh, I'm Mark Till. I'm heading a department of gynecology and gynecologic oncology in Frankfurt at the Agapisa Marcus Hospital. And uh, for the reason that we focused on breast cancer and gyne um, malignancies, uh, of course, I have to attend the SABCS, and therefore we are glad to um, report about the meeting. Um, this is a disclaimer you have to recognize first and, and afterwards um, conflicts of interest and Alex and me. So we made our choice um, regarding HR positive, uh, HER2 negative breast cancer. That means hormone receptor positive. And the first abstract you want to talk about um, is a German study, is the ADAPT main phase study. So this is the name, ADAPT is an umbrella, an umbrella project. Um, you yeah, taken uh, all the subgroups into account that we treat in, in, in breast cancer. And um, this study is about hormone receptor positive or negative breast cancer. So um, this is um, the patient population um, that these data are relevant for. And this is very briefly um, the uh, study design. Um, originally, um, the study consisted of more than 5,000 patients. Every patient had to have an indication to receive chemotherapy. That means the patient was at risk of recurrence to, um, to um, get a chemotherapy by indication. But this data that um, has been presented in San Antonio just took into account the chemotherapy patients that um, really got chemotherapy, not patrytaxel, on one side and paclitaxel on the other side, uh, followed by epirubicin and cyclophosphamide. So the story in these days was um, what is better now, paclitaxel or paclitaxel? Um, primary endpoints um, were disease-free survival and um, invasive disease-free survival. So um, again, more briefly, um, it's the story, what is better, paclitaxel or napaclitaxel? Um, to talk about the difference, so napaclitaxel um, is bound to um, human protein albumin. So this is a transport protein to bring the chemotherapy better in the cancer cells. So therefore, um, the chemotherapy itself, so the dose, um, can be much higher inside the cell when napaclitaxel is used. Um, unfortunately, napaclitaxel is not approved yet um, for this indication. It was developed um, a bit slowly, um, but um, well, never mind. We use uh, napaclitaxel for these patients um, suffering from a hypersensitivity reaction due to paclitaxel. That is called in, in this abstract solvent based, and solvent based means um, that this paclitaxel, so the regular paclitaxel, um, has to be. Um, in it has to be given in combination um, with um, uh, cortisone, so steroids, for example, and it's a bit more complicated to give. But um, as I said, the story is uh, paclitaxel uh, or napaclitaxel. When we talk about um, studies abstracts, and of course we have to um, tell you what are the patient's characteristics or how many patients had a node positive disease. In this case, you see that one up to three positive lymph nodes, uh, a third of the patients suffered from one up to three positive lymph nodes, 20%, uh, approximately 20% um, of um, yeah, th four and, and more positive lymph nodes. The, the main story of the study is, is not, and I have to point out this at, at, at this moment, um, the, main, the main message is, is, is not the, the, the chemotherapy um, uh, story because um, napaclitaxel or paclitaxel in these days um, doesn't really mean anything to us. But um, in, in the study, um, for the reason that everyone had a chemo indication, um, there was 
uh, a test um, done be before the decision was made um, due to the fact that patients received uh, a very short en endocrine anti-hormonal treatment of three up to four weeks and then a KIA-67 that stands for um, the proliferation of the tumor cells um, was measured before and after and if the KIA-67 dropped down to 10 uh, percent or below 10 percent and and this was done in, in addition a, re, um, a multi-gene assay in this study the oncotype dx the recurrence score so this is the score of the oncotype dx test um, when this score was below 25 and the patient responded to this um, short anti-hormonal treatment by measuring here 67 of 10 percent and lower then these patients um, didn't receive chemotherapy so this is something that was really practice changing and this is embedded in algorithms of the ago um, breast working group in germany in this guidelines so therefore I have to point this out. So this was um, what what was really practice changing coming from that study, and this is um, illustrated in this slide a bit that you understand. Um, it's, it's maybe a good idea at this point to emphasize how important testing is: genomic testing, genetic testing, any testing, um, because then you, you might actually avoid the chemotherapy. Yeah, so this is quite complicated and I always struggle over myself when I talk about a study, especially uh, in programs like what we do at the moment, because um, it is um, in the beginning was very difficult to understand. And I um, remember my, my uh, US colleagues when they had seen the first data of the ADAPT study, then they said, oh, wow, there's a lot to digest um, because the freaky Germans uh, are trying to figure out who, so who's, where's the indication for chemotherapy and who has not and um, there's another tool we can use so short um, anti-hormonal treatment and then a kia 67 drop and then um, a non-cotype dx recurrence score uh, below 25 so this is something uh, yeah a very um, very important piece of information to lower the chemotherapy more than we did in the past and in this study in the end, um, 25 of the uh, 25 percent of the patients didn't get chemotherapy. We had the indication for chemotherapy, and this is um, great news for our patients. Yeah, well, coming back to the data that um, had been presented in um, San Antonio, so this is the primary endpoint. Remember, paclitaxel versus not paclitaxel. Um, sorry, there is not um, a real significant. Um, difference um, regarding this primary endpoint, disease-free survival. And uh, regarding the invasive disease-free survival, you remember um, these, uh, this is another, or this was another primary endpoint. Um, we don't see um, any um, significant difference. Well, what to do with this? Um, especially... <laughs> that would be my next question. So it's like, yes. there's no difference. <laughs> what is the difference? Yeah, I, I expected your question. <laughs> um, so you, you see in this table, so it's a real busy slide um, in, in um, the first few, but um, you see that there is a trend regarding invasive disease survival for napaclitaxel. Then we have significant uh, a significant difference uh, with napaclitaxel for the um, disease-free survival, so five-year disease-free survival. Um, and, and then for relapse-free survival, that means, uh, so this is defined in a protocol, what kind of relapses, recurrences um, are count to meet that endpoint. Um, but um, you see that that is more important, I think. So the distant disease-free survival, so the avoidance of any distant metastasis and the over survival was not changed uh, in a significant way. So um, napaclitaxel didn't really, um, that benefit we, we mm. I expected for that. And okay, well, uh, thanks for explaining the abbrevi abbreviations again, <laughs> because it's always like you have all these letters and it's good that you uh, run us through and uh, briefly mentioned that as well. Thanks for that. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and very, um, so we didn't do that in a German version, but um, if we um, look down to the, to the uh, last two lines, then we see that there's a subgroup of uh, patients having a recurrence score of less than 25. That means this is the not high proliferative tumor mm -hmm. that is maybe not um, so, uh, or it can not be so affected um, uh, uh, due to chemotherapy. And, and and we see that there is no not an advantage for napaclitaxel. Um, and so um, regardless, uh, 
of the of this of the recurrence score. Um, when compare that to pathologic complete response, we do see that patients have a higher pathologic complete response when they have a higher recurrence score, standing for a higher proliferative tumor. So this doesn't play a role here. Um, yes, I mean, Alex, when we talk about um, efficacy, then uh, we have to talk about side effects. And um, what what do we see? We see the, the red bars um, standing for napaclitaxel and um, the blue bars for paclitaxel. We know from our daily routine that um, patients are suffering from more peripheral neuro neuropathy when um, napaclitaxel is given, but, but this effect... Um, will disappear um, faster um, when compared with uh, paclitaxel. So therefore, um, yes, we have to take into account the more, the, the higher grade three toxicity um, that goes along with napaclitaxel. Um, but in the end, um, both regimens are what we always say manageable. I mean, we are in the early breast cancer setting and um, this is um, different from, from metastatic disease. Yeah, especially if you have like uh, it, it, side effects that turn into long-term side effects, um, then it's something you should really consider. But if you say uh, some of them disappear quicker even than with paclitaxel, that's good news. Um, I think for, for, for a while, some people are happy to tolerate it. But what if it goes into a long-term side effect? And uh, if, if there's no difference between paclitaxel and not paclitaxel, then uh, why risk to have long-term side effects? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, so going along with data, we are not presenting here, but we are able to discuss them very briefly. So there are other studies where napaclitaxel um, has a benefit regarding efficacy um, when compared with paclitaxel, especially in a neoadjuvant setting. Um, all in all, we all would love to have a um, approval for napaclitaxel, but uh, but this will not come anymore because uh, no one will pay for for an approval study. Um, but uh, therefore, I mean, we love to have alternatives, and uh, we have an alternative um, when we are uh, thinking of um, yeah hypersensitivity reaction for paclitaxel, mm -hmm. and then we just change to napaclitaxel. So this is not, and this that's just easily done like that. Yeah, this is very easily done like that, and um, and uh, yeah. So this is this is daily routine, and and therefore, um, as I said, so um, the study or the, the results presented in San Antonio regarding the chemotherapy um, are not that important anymore. Um, but um, it is always worse to present a study um, because uh, we uh, had had been able to reduce chemotherapy by using this endocrine, this anti-hormonal treatment for, for three okay. years. So it is embedded in the algorithm, as I said. So this is um, uh, in most centers, center of, uh, center of care in Germany. Mm -hmm. So, um, and this is the conclusion, um, as I said, so we will continue um, to use now paclitaxel and paclitaxel as before. So this try, um, doesn't change anything. And uh, about the practice uh, changing issue, um, I, I talked already. Um, another big piece of information to avoid chemotherapy or to find out who needs chemotherapy by measuring uh, the Kia 67 after a short endocrine therapy. Um, and, and, and therefore, um, this, is, this is something, and this was worth to, to get this presented again mm -hmm. in the US, um, that um, the rest of the world, uh, besides the Germans, um, understands what, um, what was behind the ADAPT concept and, and what is the value of, of the results. So testing, testing, testing. Yes, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, and, and, and this was um, the, the abstract um, Alex and me decided to um, present uh, in this program um, for the subgroup Home Receptor Positive Rate and Negative, um, Alex. Hmm? Yeah, well, thank you very much for taking your time to run us uh, through the results. And uh, it's always it's always nice to see, you know, what's the point of a study and uh, what, what do we, we benefit from? Um, so thank you for that. And I look forward to the next uh, take.